So So this situation test statistic here statistic is z equals x bar n minus v z bar is good on n x is normal zero one. So uh, what we have here is we need z alpha over two. Uh, I have used z alpha over two in the note, so I use z alpha over two here. But uh, so then interval confidence interval ci is in fact x bar n minus z alpha over 2 times sigma inverse root of n and x bar n plus z alpha over 2 sigma inverse root of n. So, so we say that the probability that mu falls in ci is 1 minus alpha. So when you do the experiment one time, that's like a Bernoulli trial. This is success. Success is that mu, which is unknown, falls within this interval. So what we are saying is that the probability that mu falls within this interval is one minus alpha. So probability of success is one minus alpha for one trial. So if we do 10 trials here, then we have something like, we have a binomial. Binomial, if we do 10 trials, then the probability of success is 1 minus alpha. Okay? So you can now answer questions like, if we do the experiment, say, 5 times, what is the, uh, 10 times, what is the probability that uh, 5 times out of that, we are a mu falls within this interval. So, five out of ten, we are successful. So that is uh, uh, that is this situation. Uh, now the second one is uh, well, I'm gonna go one by one from the notes, and uh, when when sigma is unknown. When sigma is unknown, you have to use, uh, instead of sigma, you have to use S. So, an S anyway. And I used SN for that. So, remember SN was, SN squared was 1 over n minus 1, sigma, I from 1 to n x bar minus x bar n x i squared. So if I use s here, then remember that was a t distribution with n minus 1 uh, degrees of freedom. So that is a, say, t distribution n minus 1. Okay, so that's number 2. Let me write 2 here. And this is a sigma unknown. Uh, it's basically the same uh, formula, except instead of sigma, we are using S. And the same thing continues. Uh, so that is the second situation, and we see when uh, this is the situation that usually happens. So. Uh, uh, you can assume that you know sigma, but most of you have no idea. So you find S and use the T distribution. Uh, okay, and well, yeah, there was something else which I have to. Uh, yeah, you you are finding T alpha over two, not Z alpha over two. In fact, that is T alpha over two. 
So I'm set up Z. Uh, okay, so that was the second uh, problem. Now there are one-sided confidence intervals, which I leave, leave that to you. You can just look at uh, any textbook or online. Now the prediction interval, which I discussed, and uh, that is, uh, in fact, one of the things that might happen more than this, was your predicting. So, uh, prediction interval is a uh, uh, three uh, prediction interval. is uh, is in fact, uh, uh, well, we can say it is normal 0, 1, or we can say it is t n minus 1, so not too much difference. Uh, if, if, if that n is large, then there is not much difference. So uh, we can work with t or normal. And uh, the ci will be something like this. Uh, let me this thing. And let's assume that we have large M. Uh, so the uh, confidence uh, interval would be CI would be uh, X bar N minus, uh, well, let's use T. CR, T of over 2 uh, times uh, sigma square root of 1 plus 1 over n and comma x bar n plus t alpha over 2 uh, sigma square root of 1 plus 1 over n and the same thing uh, uh, well in this case it is not mu it is in fact uh, x n plus 1, the value of x n plus 1 falling within this interval, something like that. So, uh, okay, so that is the prediction interval, and uh, again, the, the same thing you can say is happening, that's when, like if you want there, no neutral. So, let me go forward and uh, yeah and uh, now these are the uh, basic ones and I discussed the uh, other uh, types uh, the other day and uh, uh, like uh, let's see Thank you. 
so let me uh, bring some, some notes and discuss that. Uh, Okay, yeah, I, I also discussed, uh, I remember I discussed uh, some other things uh, for you. Um, So here we have two populations, say one population one and population two. And each one we, we can assume that they are a normal. This population can be, say, uh, like two companies are uh, producing something, and uh, that it's very similar. So, like they're uh, producing cars, for example, the same uh, model of car, like SUV, for example, and then you're comparing something like the price. So you might say that uh, you might make some. Uh, Say you want to study, say the difference between price, something like that. So, which is usually what we do. So, uh, so we want to do some study on, say, mu one minus mu two, for example. Okay. So, if we want to study this, that that makes sense. If uh, if we can study the if it is, let's say, the price, so this company is selling for a certain price, this one is another price, say, uh, but it varies. So uh, we want to see what the average price here is and the average price here is, and to compare the averages, uh, one way to compare is to find the difference. So if this difference is positive, then this one has in the average, this one is, uh, this one is cheaper, say. Or if it's negative, this one is cheaper, something like that. So, uh, and uh, we, we want to find some interval that this thing falls within. So what we do is uh, we, so from this one, we take a sample. N1, and this one, sample of size N2. Now, what are the different scenarios that we have here? So the first scenario might be this, that the sigmas are known and equal. Second scenario is sigmas are known, but they are not equal. Third scenario is sigmas unknown, but assumed equal, which is like, like I don't know what that, or well, the, the most general one is uh, sigmas unknown, 
and not equal. And sometimes for convenience, if you are sampling here, you take the same sample size. But let's suppose they are not the same sample size. Now, uh, what we are doing is this. So, we have a random variable here. So, we have a random variable here, which uh, I call it like x1. Uh, well, maybe I should use x and y, right? So, I think. So this one, uh, there is a random variable here, x, and uh, there is also a random variable here, y, say, and these two are price, something like that. So what I'm saying is that this x is normal, and this y is also normal. So here I have x1 up to xn1, and here I have y1 up to yn2. Okay, and uh, mu1 minus mu2 will give me what? x1 minus y1, x2 minus y2, and so on. Uh, let's assume that the n1 and n2 are the same, so let's say this is also n1. So then I, I can talk about this thing, and then I have x n minus y. So x n minus y, yeah, let's say that they are the same in there. Then what is uh, a, an interval, uh, say a, a continuous interval for mu1 minus mu2. Uh, so let me erase this and uh, try this. So, from this and uh, those two things are its expected value and its uh, variance so expected value of this thing let's find it so that is expected value of x bar n minus expected value of y bar n remember this one is mu 1 minus mu 2 ok so we have something Variance of these two, assuming that they are uh, independent, that is uh, variance of the first one. And remember, plus negative one squared. That's negative one squared, so that's why we get positive. Variance of y bar n. So this was sigma one squared over n. Uh, plus sigma 2 squared by Okay, so we have everything ready. So z will be this that we have calculated, x bar n minus y bar n minus the mu, 1 minus mu 2, and uh, divided by this thing. to power one half. Okay. So, or you can write it as sigma one squared plus sigma two squared, square root of, well, there's no point. That's, that's a bad thing. 
what we have. And uh, then we mm, calculate, the, and since this is going to be normal, again, if they are normal, then this is normal, then, so this is normal with mu1 minus mu2 as uh, its mean, and uh, sigma1 squared plus sigma2 squared over n as its variance. So the confidence interval will be this. See, this should be between the z of over 2 and z uh, minus of over 2. So I have P of this uh, Z between the Z alpha over 2 and the minus Z alpha over 2. If I plug in, and this should be 1 minus alpha. So if I plug in and simply I will do the algebra, it will be X bar N minus Y bar N minus uh, Z alpha over 2 times the uh, square root of this sigma 1 squared plus sigma 2 squared over n and this n comma or yeah and uh, this will be mu 1 minus mu 2 and on the other side we have the same thing except with plus plus Okay, so basically what we have is this comma this will be the confidence interval. So uh, for uh, two samples, the same sample size, that's what we get. So what do you think uh, uh, different sample sizes should look like? So let me write that down as number five uh, so for different sample sizes so that is different sample sizes Now, different sample size, this is the only thing that, that, that changes. So, let me uh, erase this thing. So, uh, let's look at that. So, this will give me x n1 and x n uh, y n2, right? So, uh, we have n1, n2. Uh, let's uh, find the expected value again. Since we are comparing the, the averages, the n1, n2 really doesn't come into the picture. So, that is n1, x comes here, minus. Uh, in, well, it's in fact not here. So that's mu1 minus mu2. And the variance of this will be variance of x bar n1 plus variance of y bar n2. And that is uh, this one is sigma squared over n1. Uh, sigma 1, the other one is sigma 2 squared over n2. So, in fact, uh, I can say that x bar n1 minus x y bar n2 is uh, normal with uh, mu 1 minus mu 2, comma, and its variance is this. And as you can guess, the confidence interval should look 
the same. So I have x n1 minus y bar n2 minus z alpha over 2 and the square root of this sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2 comma uh, the same thing x n1 bar y n2 bar plus z alpha over 2 uh, square root of this n1 Okay, so that is uh, when the sample sizes are uh, two different numbers. Okay, now I, uh, the, the situation where uh, the sigmas are unknown, uh, that you can guess that it, it has to do with the, the t distribution, and when the sample sizes are different, or when there are, there are different situations which I discussed at the beginning, and uh, I, I, uh, I will just, uh, just write them down in the notes. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it, the, the, the most general situation definitely has to do with T distribution, but that is even, even that one is approximate. So uh, it's not really exact T distribution. So, uh, well, if you can guess sigma, then you're you can use normal distribution. So anyway, that was uh, what I intended to say in uh, uh, about like confidence intervals. Uh, so let me uh, stop this recording and.